I'm going to be a little bit harsh here. But some people think that cybersecurity is about collecting CompTIA certification and watching the latest hacking tutorial. Unfortunately, the market has changed. And just an hour ago, I finished a meeting with the head of cybersecurity of a major financial institution. And the entire conversation was about how he was frustrated with his current cybersecurity employees because a lot of them simply can't keep up with how much the industry has changed. A lot of his staff have outdated skills and they refuse to learn any Anything new. And honestly, I can't blame him. From a business point of view, it's really hard to justify paying senior cybersecurity engineers high salaries if the only skill they have is managing one tool, especially if that tool is no longer needed. Therefore, if you want to stay relevant in the cybersecurity market, I want you to listen carefully because in the next few minutes, I will share with you five skills that will be obsolete in the next 18 to 24 months. And trust me when I tell you this, they happen faster than you think. Skill number one is is being a specialist in one tool or one vendor. Believe it or not, that was me in the early 2000s. My specialty was Sun Microsystems Unix servers. Now, you may be too young to remember Sun Microsystems, but let me tell you this. They were the absolute dominant player in the market. Every organization had Sun Microsystems servers. They were the backbone of IT infrastructure. And therefore, no one could have imagined that they were about to disappear. And the painful part of this is that it did not happen progressively. It Actually happened overnight. We saw the news of Oracle acquiring Sun Microsystems and right then and there I knew that the writing was on the wall because the following years were really really painful. I saw my friends and colleagues losing their jobs because they only knew Sun Microsystems servers. Now the way I survived was by upskilling in other things. At the time I was already learning cybersecurity in depth but I also learned and did Red Hat Linux which was hot at the time. Therefore if you're a cybersecurity professional and all you know is one brand of firewall for example you're a cisco firewall specialist or perhaps you're a splunk engineer or you're an imperva WAF administrator i strongly urge you to diversify your skills because the industry is changing quickly and a lot of these tools may become obsolete over time so your company may not need you anymore skill number two is thinking that certifications alone will guarantee employment this one is painful especially for me because i absolutely love certifications however for those of you who are still stuck with traditional certifications that are just multiple choice based or perhaps you're just chasing certifications from one vendor, I highly encourage you to reconsider that and focus on practical hands-on labs. Look into certifications that are not just based in theory. Instead, use the certification as a structured way to learn a subject. For example, if you're currently a firewall administrator and you want to learn SOC analyst skills, the best way to do that is not to do CompTIA as a plus. Instead, pick a practical certification like Hack the Box CJCA or Try Hack Me SAL1. This way you get a chance to practice what you learn. And when the time comes and your organization no longer needs your current skills, you can easily move to a different team because you already know what to do and your resume will have the right keywords because you've kept yourself up to date. Now, skill number three is where I see a lot of highly technical individuals go wrong, which is staying purely technical. I get it. You got into cybersecurity because you absolutely love ethical hacking, or you really, really love coding, or perhaps you're so passionate about network security. I totally understand that, and that was me. However, the industry has changed so much. You can no longer get away with being the technical genius who have no understanding of how the business work. You need to understand the business language, which means you need to be able to articulate the technical work that you do using risk management language. This is the language that the business understands. You're working on a firewall? Fantastic. What does that mean to the organization? Is it reducing the risk or is it just costing them money? You need to understand how to communicate that. And the way to do that is to actually learn GRC. Now, I'm not asking you to become a GRC professional or a GRC analyst. All I'm asking you is to acquire the skill of GRC so that when your organization asks you to perform some risk management activities or participate in compliance programs, then you know what to do. Otherwise, you will be replaced by someone who knows that. GRC skills will also open so many doors for you if you ever want to move into management or leadership positions. Technical people don't lead organizations. GRC professionals do. Now, I've actually solved this problem for you with GRC Mastery. I've put years and years of cybersecurity GRC experience in one training platform 
tool and when you do it you'll be able to gain practical hands-on GRC skills that you can use whether you want to work in GRC or whether you want to stay technical but you want to be the technical professional who's able to talk to business leaders and other departments. Please check it out on grcmastery.com and I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. Skill number four is being hyper specialized and that's kind of similar to the previous point in the sense that if you want to be a really good SOC analyst and perhaps you become a senior SOC analyst or a senior incident responder. However, just be mindful that a lot of businesses now are looking for generalists. A generalist is an individual who can perform more than one task and this is especially important in the age of AI. I have personally helped organizations outsource their entire security operation function because it simply didn't make any business sense to have it on-prem. It was costing the organization so much money and it wasn't providing the organization with the value that it needed to provide. Therefore, what these organizations do is that they utilize what we refer to as managed security service provider, where that third party provider will provide SOC analyst services, but they still need a number of employees in the company to be able to deal with those alerts. However, they don't need so many of them. <laughs> Therefore, the cybersecurity professionals who still work in the company are those who can do a little bit of SOC analyst work, but they can also do GRC work and they can respond to phishing attacks and they can read and interpret penetration testing reports. Now, I know this might sound overwhelming to you, but these are skills that you can build slowly and surely once you have your foot in the door. And it's not as hard to build these skills today as it used to be, simply because we have an abundance of excellent cybersecurity training platforms that can get you there. Now, skill number five is for those who ignore AI and security automation. Now, the reality of today, AI hasn't taken over cybersecurity jobs. If anything, it's actually creating more cybersecurity jobs because I constantly find myself needing to clean up a lot of the mess that AI has created. However, if you're a cybersecurity professional, I highly recommend you involve yourself with any project that includes AI or automation. I'm not saying you need to become an AI or automation specialist, but at least have an awareness of that. Keep an open mind for any new technology. Now, where most people go wrong is that they ignore the fundamentals and they want to jump straight into AI or straight into automation. And by fundamentals, I don't mean CompTIA certificates. I mean cybersecurity fundamentals. So in order for you to understand how automation work within a security operation center context, you need to actually know how to work as a security operation analyst first. And if you want to know how to handle the new regulation we have around AI, you first need to understand GRC, then you can embed AI within that. Now, if you want to know how to build all of those skills combined, then I highly recommend you check out this video because I teach you how to gain those skills in a step-by-step -step manner. And I also show you how to add them to your resume. Check it out and I'll see you there.